Uh, next up, we have Chris Short, who is a U.S. Air Force veteran and has been in the IT world for the last more than 20 years. I'm At this point, old. he is old, <laughs> apparently. Um, he also focuses on the open source focused newsletter DevOps ish. So, Thank you. please. So hi, y'all. I'm Chris Short. I made these slides yesterday with the screaming toddler in the back seat of my car on the way down here from Detroit. Uh, so pardon the quality if they are crappy. Uh, so Kubernetes, who likes Kubernetes? Who likes cron jobs? Well, you can like both. It's OK. So I used to work for a company that had thousands of cron jobs running on one box. What could possibly go wrong, right? Like, all these jobs for a newspaper company, news needs to be timely, hence the cron jobs. Uh, they all ran on one system, and when it failed, it was awful. This was not the dream that I was having. This was the dream of a highly distributed cron job system that I wanted eight years ago. Uh, that is now something called Kubernetes. Kubernetes, don't be afraid of it, it is a container orchestrator, plain and simple. There's a lot of stuff behind it, but it tells you it lets you manage containers effectively. Just leave it at that for this talk. We only have a little bit of time. So there's some concepts called pods, which is a unit of a number of containers, one, two, as many as your application needs. These pods can scale. You can have multiple versions of the same pod. It's kind of nice. Your infrastructure scales automatically. Jobs <clears throat> in Kubernetes land are the running of a pod until successful completion unless you tell it otherwise. Um, you can have the job run multiple times. You can have the pod run 17 times before failing permanently. A cron job adds a time to that. The one problem with Kubernetes when it comes to time is everything's UTC, so just keep that in mind. So the cron job literally uses the cron tab kind of syntax and applies everything to it. Everything I just told you is in a children's book. This is how I learned Kubernetes at first. Don't be afraid of Kubernetes. There's an animated guide. I read this to my kid. He loved it. So now I need a cron job that's distributed because I run a newsletter, and it updates my website and does all this fun stuff. So I can create a webhook with Netlify to push my static website out to their CDN. All I need to do is call this webhook with curl but I need it to be really, really, really timely because people get irritated when they don't get their newsletter at 7 a.m. on a Sunday. I don't know why. Uh, so Docker, Google Cloud, uh, registry, because I'm a masochist, and Kubernetes. So here we go. Uh, first, build a Docker file that does a curl. The curl should be uh, a variable because it's a secret that we're going to store in Kubernetes uh, encrypted. And then push or build the Docker file or Docker image tag it, push it to GCR. What you didn't see is all the bullshit I had to go through yesterday, finding bugs on a low or a high latency connection on a cell phone. That was fun with the screaming toddler in the back. Meanwhile, after I got everything working, uh, I applied what they call a uh, service account into Kubernetes, which is different than a Google service account, which you also need. So hence the confusing part, which is this slide. That is a Google Cloud service account description, and below it is all you need to get that working in Kubernetes. Google Cloud is more complex than Kubernetes. Don't let them tell you different. All right, so what does the actual Kubernetes YAML look like? Well, call a container, call it every so often, and if I had started uh, Kubernetes on my laptop, it would be running right now every three minutes and blowing up my watch, but for your sake, I didn't do that. All right, so what happens during this thing? It creates pods. The pods start and stop upon success every three minutes. That's the first five lines there. The rest of it is actually what's going on behind the scenes. Oh, and by the way, this dashboard is also updating as jobs run successfully too. So this is all my evidence. This actually worked yesterday on a cell phone in a car driving here. Um, and then, in conclusion, we built a container, pushed it to a registry. Uh, Kubernetes was configured to use that private registry, created a secret to store the build hook URL. Didn't really show you that because slides stuff. 
I have all the references here. I will upload them to my website and share them so you can enjoy as well. If you're confused about Kubernetes, let me know. I will give you this book. I only have one, though. Just come find me after this. Thank you.